Men themselves have wondered what they see in me. They try so much, but they can't touch my inner mystery. When I try to show them, they say they still can't see. I say, it's in the arch of my back, the sun of my smile, the ride of my breasts, the grace of my style. I'm a woman, phenomenally. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Like Water for Chocolate. Of course, it's your girl, Truth, and my other half is not here today, Lex Love. Um, She has some stuff she had to take care of, so let's just send her positive vibes, well wishes, and we're still going to have a really great show because I am fortunate enough to have a great guest here with me that'll be able to hopefully fill in that void of Lex not being here. Um, But before I dive into that, I just want to thank everyone so much for all of the support we've had thus far with this season. We're only three shows in, and I'm getting so much feedback. Um, I hope you checked out the latest two episodes where we had Shanae Glass and then also Jamaica from The Shades of Chocolate. And we also had Andrea, our last episode, who is a author and a, a school counselor as well. She's very educated, very amazing. We truly had a great time with all of the guests that we've had thus far. But today I have with me a guest that goes by the name of Kismet. You may all know her as that. I know her as Crystal now as well. But I appreciate her coming in. And I'm going to let her really do like a formal introduction of herself. All right. um, Thank you for having me. I feel very honored to be here, you know, for you to even ask me to come by, share my life. Um, Yes, my name is Crystal Wilson. I go by Kismet as a poet um, from Dallas, Dallas. and a bit about my history, I guess, uh, where I am and who, where I come from. I have a, a academic background in architecture, so I'm, I'm really big into design. But um, I have a, I would call it a spiritual gift of, Absolutely. <laughs> of poetic and spoken word, um, poetry and spoken word. And um, at this point in my life, I'm just kind of moving through both of those gifts, uh, learning to merge and bridge the, you know, the... Um, Bridge the two as far as like both of their powers. Um, I'm developing a company right now that helps, uh, that will help me like further implement my my beliefs in regards to how we can integrate food into our built environment. Yes. And um, yeah, I was reading that when I read your bio, I was like, I didn't know. Like, I already thought you were amazing. But then when I got to reading what you sent me in the email, I'm like, oh, my goodness. Like, what is it that she couldn't do? (laughs) <laughs> like, no, honestly, your educational background is amazing. Congrats on that as well. Um, especially that. just keeping it real, being a black woman in America and to have as much education as you do. That is great. And I'm so excited that I've been able to meet so many educated black women lately because in my growing up, I didn't get that. Mm-hmm. And so to meet you all, I'm so happy to have met you because now you're pushing me to want to further my education because <laughs> um, I've always been told that I'm smarter than what I do. So I I definitely want to do that. But we appreciate you being on and everything that you stand for, which we'll definitely dive into as well and more of your beliefs and some things that are important to you. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Know what can really help you sort through these important issues? Being really, really, really ridiculously good looking? There will be casualties because I'm slaying these bitches. Welcome to Go To's with Lex Love. In this segment, I review products I actually use and love. To get a list of my go to's, head over to beatnetworkonline.com. You can also find weekly updates on the Like Water for Chocolate pages. First one is Facebook, uh, Like Water for Chocolate, and on Instagram at LWFC Podcast. So for today's product, I have Pixie Skin Treats. It is a glow tonic and exfoliating toner. Um, I love using toners right after I get out of the shower. I put it on a cotton ball and scrub it all over my face before applying my moisturizer. This always um, gets rid of all of the excess dirt that I wasn't able to get when I am in the shower using my um, daily face washes. And uh, I think last week we did discuss... um, the face wash that I use and the lotions. So uh, you can head over to our uh, pages to check those out. But this one's great. I actually got a mini size from my Ipsy bag. And that's where I get a lot of my products actually is getting the little treats from, you know, the Ipsy bag once a month. And then sometimes they'll give you a full size. Sometimes they give you a mini. In this case, they gave me a mini, but I am 
absolutely going to head over to their website and get a full one or see where I can find those. Um, Also to uh, get a list of websites and places where you can find them, head over to Beat Network online and I'll put them up there. I'm going to start keeping track of these um, just in case you guys have questions. But yeah, this is great. It's very, very calming. I have sensitive skin. I can't put harsh chemicals on my face. I mean, I'll break out immediately. I'll get rashes. I've had breakouts from these things. So I absolutely recommend this. Um, There is a little bit of alcohol in it for those of you who um, don't like the alcohol, the parabens, you want to stay away from it. You might not want to try it. Uh, You can try a little bit of it, maybe do every other day, maybe just two to three times a week. You don't have to do it daily. But for this one, it's very gentle. So I've been doing it uh, daily. And it's for all skin types. I myself have very oily skin. So anytime I find a really great product that will take some of that oil away, I stick to it because it's amazing. Um, This one is dermatologist uh, tested. They suggest to use it in the morning and at night and as needed. So like I said, Try it, start off really slow, two to three times a week, maybe gradually get to daily, but I'm on daily, very gentle. It's amazing. So that is my go-to product for this week. Um, Thanks for tuning into my go-tos, guys. Uh, I love doing it. I love products. I love anything beauty. It's amazing. I hope to do more and um, maybe get some other things kicked off as far as that goes. So you can find me at Lex Love Beat on Instagram and on Twitter. Thanks, guys. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. As far as your poetry or spoken word, that's Mm -hmm. how I met you. Mm -hmm. And so when did you first realize that this was a gift you had? Uh, well, I first started writing in, like in high school. So with love, okay. you know, it was just like my way of expression. I was a very introverted type, of, even though, you know, I was popular with basketball, but I just wasn't really an outspoken person. Okay. Um, so I use that as a way of expression. And, um, after I got a little older and got to college, that's when it started to really come out because I was dealing with, uh, realizing a lot of truths about life. Uh, I went to uh, Texas A&M and m and it was a uh, predominantly white university okay, okay so I dealt with a lot of uh Got racial it. issues for mm-hmm. the first time and um and poetry just again began to be that way of release for me or like that expression to be like you know how you know how are things this way when they should just be this way yeah um so I would say college college like my I think it was my sophomore year was my okay. first open mic that I attended Nice. Do you remember the piece you performed? Or the (laughs) name of it? It was a love piece, actually. (laughs) (laughs) I think that's where a lot started with those love, because love is just an unspoken language anyway. So if you can find a way to fit it into poetry, that's normally that's normally how it starts. (laughs) That's when you know you got a little gift. (laughs) Absolutely. But now you have pieces on everything. Yeah. I've heard a lot of different, like there's, she'll get on you guys. Honestly, she'll get on her Instagram (laughs) and it'll only be like 30 seconds, but it'll be all you need to get through the rest of your day. Hmm. And it'll just be so (laughs) great. And we'll let you guys know how to follow um, her on Instagram as well. Cause I think everyone should, Um, especially if you enjoy poetry, if you enjoy just realness. Um, And then also I wanted to ask you, when you wrote your first poem, I think you said you were in high school. Mm-hmm. Well, and I know it was love. Was it a long piece or was it like pretty short and sweet? No, it was pretty short and sweet. I wouldn't say it was long. It was probably like, you know, uh, I would say maybe <laughs> maybe like 30 seconds. <laughs> okay. Was it you for know? someone? Did someone yeah. inspire you to write it? Yeah. At that time, oh, I had a high puppy school love. sweetheart and he was like, just my life, <laughs> you know. <laughs> So I'm just like, so we know. thought at that moment, <laughs> that is so cute. Yeah. I remember when I used to write poetry and I thought I was going to develop and get better. And then I stopped. I just stopped writing. Why? And I, I, I couldn't even, life happened. Mm-hmm. And I just, I gave up on a lot of things. And so I, that's why I love to hear it. And that's yeah. why I appreciate it so much because it's like, dang, she's saying exactly what I was feeling, but she put <laughs> it together. so amazing. And now it's like, I'm like, well, maybe I could write again. And I'm like, no, nope, sis, that's not even your gift. Let them have it. Cause I went back and I found one of my old binders and my pieces were so cute, but they were like Lisa Frank type poetry. So <laughs> it, it just didn't work. And so I'm just going to leave that gift to those that actually have it such as yourself. Hey, but I, what I feel like with poetry, you know, I think when it comes to performance, it changes things, you know, it sort of changes the, um, 
the rawness of it, you know, of why you write, you know, right. you know, because poetry initially is like a release. So I feel like, you know, you should continue to write, not to say that you have to think about sharing it, you know, because you don't have to necessarily be a performer. You know, that, that changes everything. But there is a gift that comes with writing to yourself, you know, and for yourself. That's it's a healing good. that I feel like like a communication that happens between the soul self and the mind self. Absolutely. You know, so um, I, I would encourage you to continue to write and, you know, not thinking about what everybody else is doing because, um, I mean, and that's one of the, you know, we're, where we're leading to. But, you know, one of the things with it becoming popular and becoming a, like a trend, like a, a thing now. Right, I think right. The, the true essence of what poetry represents is kind of, you know, it, it kind of gets... Not diluted, but, you know, we sort of kind of lose lose focus on what it is, you know, Absolutely. and why, you know, it, was, it wasn't necessarily entertainment initially, you know, more so just... More so intimate moments. No, you know what? And I never thought about it that way because now, um, and that also leads into the, the poetry versus the spoken word. So mm-hmm. I know a lot of poets that have never performed and mm-hmm. don't want to perform. Mm-hmm. They, um, they'll release it written online mm-hmm. um, just so that it can be read. Um, but they're like, no, I feel like my poetry shouldn't be spoken. It should just be read and felt. Mm-hmm. And so is is that where you draw the line between poetry and spoken word? Or is there even really a difference? Or do you think spoken word is what made, I would call it a hashtag poetry movement. <laughs> like now it's a hashtag. Now it's not even really felt as deeply as it used to. I think now it's just more of a movement instead of people really connecting with the root of why this person is even up there speaking what they're speaking. Right. Yes. Yes. I mean, I think one of the things when we first start to speak, you know, anybody, anytime you receive something, you begin to immediately attach it to yourself. So, right. you know, when it comes to the artists, I mean, most people, you know, detach it first and, and see how it feels for them. But in regards to the difference between, you know, poetry and spoken word, I feel like it depends on the writer, right? Okay. So for me, I I can see myself as both, you know. Only thing is that the way that I write sometimes, um, it's hard for you to understand how I mean it you unless I it. say it, you know, or unless I write the commas the correct way or maybe move my word <laughs> and add some space in between, you know. Um I think that that the art of that that change of uh, communication, you know, that like that sense. shift is is really where that line is drawn. Um, but it personally, like I'm, I'm working on my first like book, and um, that's one of my challenges. It's like now when I go back and I'm sitting with the editor and I'm reading through, and they're like, "Oh, but this doesn't make sense when I'm reading it. What do you mean?" And I'm like, "Well, when I say it like this, <laughs> you understand what I'm saying, right? You know." So trying to find that communication, that level of uh, you know between you know. Is it is it grammatically correct or not even necessarily grammatically correct, but is it written in a way that it can be read, read the way and that understood? You mean? Yeah. Okay, so. I can I can definitely understand that because when you speak, you speak with a lot of passion, mm-hmm. and so it's kind of hard to write, I guess, passion filled words to where people understand what you like. You said what you really mean, right? Um, for example, um, <laughs> I was um, reading the rap lyrics because. Um, People say a lot of how they call Paca a poet. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was reading his lyrics. And when you read them, his lyrics actually can be read without you even listening to the song. Mm -hmm. But then you take someone, and who else did I compare? I think I grabbed, like, um, Common, who I I thought was also, like, a poet in his own sense. But when I read his lyrics, I'm like, nah, because I need him to say it the way he said it in that mm-hmm. song or it's not going to make sense to me. Mm-hmm. And so I do get the difference now because to me, they're both poets in their own sense. Right, absolutely. They just do it in a, in a speaker. Pop did it in a speaking form and right. then Common as well does it in a speaking form. Mm-hmm. Um, but now that you're finding the balance between writing, do you think you're going to enjoy writing a little bit more or will you always have a love and passion for both? I think I will always have a love and passion for both, but I I am finding a um like a new joy in that because it's a it's another challenge, you know, it's another mm-hmm. uh, medium of art I would say um that kind of, you know, uh pushes me to more clearly express myself, you know, to like cuz one of the things I like with poetry is like one word could give two different meanings for that sentence, yep. you know. And so 
when I'm writing and being able to do that, having to be able to do that, you know, or having to do that, you know, so that people can get that understanding. It's, it's a challenge, but once it's done, it's, a it's fun like, yeah, challenge. it's a fun challenge. Yeah, you know? it's rewarding. So, you know, yeah, so I, I enjoy that part. I mean, well, I don't I'm see excited for the sacrificing book. it. Thank you. I can't wait yeah. for it to be released. I know that it's going to be good. And y'all know I'm going to post it all over my social media, so just be ready. <laughs> Because um, poetry is something that I grew up with. Reason being is because it helped me get through a lot of the things that I was going through, which is why I used to write when I was younger. I um, looked at some of my old um, poems I wrote, and a lot of times it was really just words. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they didn't make sense. But when I was writing it at the time, it made sense to me. Because that's exactly how I was feeling. And so I'm like, you know what? Now I see why people told me to journal. Whitney, if you're not going to write poetry, just journal. So journaling is my thing. That's the way I get my feelings out because I used to hold a lot of aggression as a child. Mm -hmm. And I was a fighter. (laughs) (laughs) And now I'm an adult and we don't fight anymore. So um, journaling is how I write down. Like if I'm frustrated about something, sometimes just writing down words of how I'm feeling and getting that out. And then I read it, but I make sure that I follow it up with affirmation because I can't leave with with those same thoughts Mm -hmm. that I just wrote down. And so I appreciate the writers. I appreciate the poets because even listening to poetry back then, um, my mom used to be able to... um, Music was big in our house. Mm -hmm. So that's where it led into me like, okay, well, some of these people are really telling a story. So one of the first to me, she's still a poet, is Dr. Maya Angelou. I looked and sought her after first. She was one of the first I stumbled across when Uh we had a black history. Of course, we only get one month in school. We're able to write about (laughs) black people. Right. But everybody else was looking for Dr. Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. And I'm like, no, I want a woman. Right. And so Maya Angelou was who I picked up out of all the lists of the people we're allowed to write about. And when I really got to do the research on her and why she wrote the way she did and the stuff she went through and the struggle she went through and her hard times in life and how she was able to speak about them, but be so elegant with it to where it can be received. And unless you knew her background, you wouldn't understand that that's what she was talking about at that time. And so being able to appreciate her and then um, some of the people I went to school with wrote amazing. I was in a creative writing class, so I got to be around a (laughs) lot of great writers and they were really telling a story when they were writing. And so when I see the passion and I get to actually be around the passion, which is why when you were speaking at the event, um, the from the mouths of us, and we still appreciate you for being there. I'm like, she's up there really telling a story. Mm -hmm. Like this is something that she feels on the inside. And so when I see it become a hashtag movement, Mm -hmm. it bothers me Mm -hmm. because it's so much more than that. It's these people are telling a story. Absolutely. And so to dilute it or to water it down, Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be done as such. Right, right. And so I, I hope that eventually it'll fade away. And I'm not saying I don't want for poetry and spoken right. word to become more, I guess, um, sought after or be popular. Mm-hmm. But y'all just don't turn it into a hashtag. Right. Don't, yeah. <laughs> don't, you know, it, I think one of the things about it with art that's scary is when you systemize it. You, know, yes. you cannot systemize the process of art. And I think that a lot with poetry, you know, just because like how they've done in the music industry, you know, people, we've created these these forms, um, how people just call, kind of follow. And what I love about what you were saying, you say you journal, you prefer to journal and write mm-hmm. poetry. But it's funny because that's how it started for me. I just journal, 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 and, start, and it turns into poetry. You know what I mean? And it's like that organic movement is what gives it the beats that it, it turns into. You know, like, so, like, even for me in my process, it's like, as I'm writing emotionally, the mm-hmm. beats come through that. You know, so every poem shouldn't necessarily sound the same. I mean, it may, of course, my voice is my voice. So right, whatnot, right. But, you know, um, just the originality, you know, of each piece and what it means. And, like, that's the part that is... At Jeopardy, you know, that I feel like we are at that that's at risk for the more popular it becomes because people are like, oh, okay, I'm gonna, I like this poet, so I'm yep. gonna copy this poet <laughs> and I'm gonna keep it going, you know, without even really knowing the, the poet, feeling the poet, you know, it's like to understand where it came from. It's like, yes, it's your own vibration, let's do it, you know, and like if anything, gotta stay original, it's poetry, you know, absolutely. Music is. 
you know, we're just, we're trying. We're trying to keep the music, you know, as, uh, as um, I would say, diverse as, as it originally And it's all is. starting to sound the same. Oh. Yeah. Yep. The ones and I don't that want that radio, to happen to poetry. Yeah. I really don't. And I, I'm, I can see when I go to certain events, and I, of course, I'll never name names, but there are some that I think just saw someone else do it that way and decided to go up there and do it. Now, how can I tell? I don't feel your passion. Mm-hmm. I feel people's vibrations. I feel when you're telling a story. I feel when that piece really means something to you. Or if you're just going up there performing something you rehearsed and you rehearsed it that way, so that's how you want it to come right, out. every time. There's, there's, a, there's a difference. <laughs> mm-hmm. there, there's an absolute difference. Um, mm-hmm. One of my favorite, and he's, he's pretty well known, um, but I met him just at a show, and his name's Andrew Tyree. Mm-hmm. And his, the way he delivered his poems, it was so subtle. But he enunciates every word. And that's just because he's educated that way. And that's just how he (laughs) speaks. And I I saw someone else try to do his piece and imitate it. And there was, I couldn't get that feeling. I couldn't. And I I commented and I I found, I was like, uh, somebody uh, took one of your pieces and performed it somewhere. And he was like, well, in all honesty, he was like, it's flattering to me. He said, it sucks that they, you know, took credit for it. But, you know, it's it's good (laughs) to see that, you know, it it carried weight. But he was one of the first, I guess, not, um, he was very humble, I guess. Mm -hmm. He to me, he was greater than I think people even knew he was right. because he now he can he has a podcast as well. But I think his writing can go into writing books and mm-hmm. movies and everything mm-hmm. else. But it's because he really felt what he was talking about. Right. So when I saw it imitated, I was like, yeah, it's uh, not the same. like, let's not do that, guys. Mm-hmm. Like, let's even try to do it soft and subtle like him. And I'm like, you, you, you can't yeah. like you just you can't because yeah. number one, your voice isn't the same as his. Right. Right. The way you speak isn't the same as his. And you're not really telling telling that story and it's not your truth because that, that's his story right, right. and so that's when I really started to pay attention and so if nothing else you guys if you are going to perform perform you right absolutely perform your truth absolutely and absolutely. if you're not ready to perform just write like me right just write <laughs> and keep it to yourself for just a minute write like the, me uh, the uh I think um I'm not sure if you've heard of slam have you heard of slam I have so yes. I know with that it that tends to have a lot of like the same sort of structure yes. you know but it's for competition you know bases and stuff like that too so I mean I don't know that's that may be a whole nother topic to talk yes. about at some point <laughs> because like I know right now I just joined the slam team and I I always used to say I wasn't gonna ever do that because I don't like the idea of competing. Right, with art, right, you right. Know what I mean, but um, that whole deal where it's like you know someone else's style that started that it has mm-hmm. has I mean it literally has like trickled trickled into, down yeah mm-hmm. and like literally everybody who pretty much jump into that usually goes to that same style. It's like the same you know. And that, but that's a whole nother topic yeah, to where it's, it's like, you know, is it pretty much a circle back right, down to keep sk- your originality? Yes, man. Yes. Art is an individual expression, you Absolutely. guys. It's individual. Absolutely. Painters, people who paint, people who draw, people who write music. Right. It's, it's individuality. Yeah, now you guys are mainstream music sounds crazy. But if you look and sought after those artists who truly still keep it real to what they yes. truly like, wanted to come out with the type of music they wanted to use to express themselves, it all sounds different. Absolutely. Very it different. absolutely sounds different. Like, for example, I like this chick named Abra. Mm-hmm. And not too many people listen to her. But I love her music because she tells a story in all of her songs. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it gets a little dark, but everybody has their dark moments. Right. And then she always brings it back with light as well. And so I appreciate her for that. Mm-hmm. When SZA first started, she was one of my favorite artists. Yes. I understand her wanting to move to mainstream, but the reason why I used to appreciate her is because her music was poetic to me. Because unless you really listened to it, you didn't know what she was talking about. Um, Like her song, Hijack. I love that song. And some people are like, what's that? I'm like, go listen to the old. You probably won't even like her because it's nothing like the new album. (laughs) It is not mainstream music (laughs) at all. But when I I see people becoming mainstream, it hurts my feelings sometimes because I'm like, I just want to keep you back to myself when nobody knew who I was listening to when right. I was listening to you yes. in the car and now you're out there with all these people and they're going to ruin you yes. <laughs> and they're yeah. going to drown your gift and then you're going to forget about it and 
it, it simplify hurts. it. Mm-hmm. It makes it boring, you know. It does. I was talking to someone about a line, the editor about a line, and they, and they were like, "Well, you no, know, they can't understand it initially." I was like, "Well, art supposed to make you think, Absolutely. you know, and like when it comes to real artistry, you should you should want to listen over and over again, not because only it feels good, you know. It's just because there's more to discover about that piece, you know, and like when it comes to mainstream, a lot of times they cut that out real quick. All you the know way. what I mean? And so it's just like you, you it is what you get. You mm-hmm. know, you get what you get. Whatever you hear and that's how it is. That line is what it means. Don't think anything. Don't deeper. think anything. This is <laughs> what know? it is. Yes. Yeah, the music yeah. doesn't get deep at all anymore. Yeah. yeah. Unless you still listen to Miss Erica Badu. Oh she yes. gonna make you think for the rest of her oh, life, yeah. her she existing. Yes. She you gonna think forever. So she's someone I absolutely appreciate. Absolutely. So when people ask me, Whitney, who's some of your favorite poets? Erica. Yes. Badu. yes. <laughs> so yeah, Badu. Just so y'all think I'm talking about just a regular Erica, Miss Badass Badu. I absolutely appreciate everything about that lady. Yeah, she's amazing. And yeah, some people amazing. don't understand her, but if you can learn to understand her mm-hmm. and her frequency, she just vibrates higher, y'all. That's all. She gives so much knowledge. So oh, much. So much. I Even mean. back with On and On. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Those I didn't the, know what I was singing favorites. when I was younger. But now that I'm older... Oh and a little goodness. wiser, yes. and I vibrate a little higher, and now I go back and listen to the song. I'm like, that's what she was talking Absolutely. about. Tell that story, yeah. Miss Badu. <laughs> you better let them know. Yeah. Everything about, I mean, from the, the Orange Moon. Yes. That, that's one of my favorites. You know, it's just like the message that she has with that and what it represents. And she, she's she's one of my favorites, she's, too. Like, I mean, hands down. I would love to sit down and just converse with her. <laughs> yeah, and I, I understand that... Um, as far as for people being around her, not everybody can understand and appreciate her presence. Right. But I think if you were to meet her oh, and you oh, were to, absolutely. I think you guys would talk for hours. Oh, absolutely. And it would be received well on both ends. Absolutely. Because just the Thank little you. bit of time I've been around you, your energy mm. is, is something special. <laughs> I appreciate it. When, that. after you got done performing, show was over and everything. And my husband was there and I was like, babe, her energy is so <laughs> dope. And he was like, nah, he was like, she was, she was, she was really, really good. He was like, I think that was like my favorite part. <laughs> and oh, I'm like, awesome. I just stand it. <laughs> and I'll try to take him with me to like, um, spoken word events and he'll get bored after a while. And I'll see him start to slouch in his seat. And, <laughs> and so for him to say that, I know it's real. Cause he's a writer himself and mm-hmm. he's, he's very in tune with telling a story and he likes to use words that I don't know. Cause that's just his thing. He he likes to make people think. Right. And so for him to appreciate your art, that was also, That's you know, kind of like that. a stamp. And so, yeah, he appreciated it as well. But we know that you're great with your spoken word and your poetry and your writing. But you have another passion. Mm-hmm. And you have the passion of urban farming. And the fact that you believe that everybody should be able to have good, nutritional, healthy food. Absolutely. And so where did this passion come from? Because people talk about it, but mm-hmm. you live it. Yeah. So where did that come from? You know, it was it's funny because um yeah, you know, I my life began normal, right? You know, Texas, right. we eating everything. I didn't even really think twice about my eating habits at the time. Uh it wasn't until I was honestly trying to find more purpose in architecture and um I wanted to expand outside of architecture, but I couldn't. And um grad school I had a friend, he was this, he was um designing integrated building systems. I had no idea what it was. But when I looked into it, I found a, a vertical farms. And at that point, nice. it just, I don't know, because it, immediately it touched with me because it's like, you know, we live in, we have this body. Right. You know, our souls house the body. And in order for our souls to truly experience and fully experience, you know, life, our body needs to be in the best shape, you know, exactly. and it starts with what we eat. And so I've always taken architecture to be a social, uh, have social responsibility, you know, as far as how we're going to implement those things that are better for us. You know, cars came, we figure out, okay, garages and all the streets and all this other stuff. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. Um, when it comes to food, that's, that for me, it meant it, it lit me up inside, like literally turned everything around for me, you know, wow. that, like completely. And, um, once I, once I, the more that I started to study and research on what I needed to do to learn how to design better for the, you know, for farming and stuff like that and building it into the uh, mm-hmm. environment, it made me 
uh, follow up and learn more about the nutritional stuff and like just how much information we don't know. Like I had no idea, no idea. I mean, I've always liked vegetables and stuff like that, but right. I never knew really why, you know. So for me, it's it's become yes a uh, a movement for me as far as like you know architecture, but just people in general. And I feel like you know the universe uh, always provides its. It's uh, what would I call it? Um, it's animals, or it's beast, or it's is people, or right? It's children, <laughs> and, you know, God always provides for for what is created, you know, what right. it has created, and I feel like we already have everything we need to have the basics of life. Like all the vegetables that are at the grocery stores are so basic, and I mean, when when we all see how easy it is to grow, I think we won't even understand how we live so long by allowing someone else to take care of that part, you know. And so my my newest solution, I feel, is that we can grow everything we basically need. And the large corporations can focus on all the exotic things that we have no idea exist. You know, like most people, when the carrots came out and the rainbow carrots and all those stuff came, they didn't know there are multiple colors. Right, and, right. You know, thousands of different potatoes and apples and all kind of things that actually, you know, other fruits that can actually uh, help us stay healthy. You know, I feel like, you know, just the, at the base of it, if we start to at least have that, then society will transform in itself without us even having to think about other things because consciously we'll be a little bit more clear with what we're eating, that you know, by sense. what we're eating. So that that shift kind of, yeah, it happened via architecture, you know, just trying to... And people to, would never put two the two together. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> and, and I can't see it otherwise now. I'm like, you know... I mean, we're nature's beings, you know, we're nature's babies. We come from it, you know, and I mean, and somehow, you know, our great minds have created this, um, this wall, the, you know, because we could create walls, we created walls. And now we think that this is our reality. It's supposed to be burying with walls with no life at all. You know, right. so much so the people you meet, you mentioned nature and to be out there, they are like, ah, I'm not a nature person. I'm like, what are you talking about? You are a nature <laughs> being. Yeah. You know, so, um, but just to, to go back. Back. It's just it's the base of it's the base of living. Period. You know, you can at the, if you can get rid of all that we think about, whether it's religion, whether it's you know even you know um, social status, whatever. You know, like beyond all of that, being a human, it's mm-hmm. all about what you eat first. It, it is greater, great or not doing anything with that you with your life. You know exactly. No, Ooh. that's that's so true, and I, I had to learn that the hard way. Mm -hmm. Um, But what you put in your body makes a difference on a lot of different levels, Absolutely, which is why I appreciate what you're doing and what you're wanting to bring forward, because it is not made aware enough, because, of course, the corporations are not going to want you to know. Um, Pharmaceutical companies don't want you to know. Um, And so within my household, um, you have me, you have my husband, two kids, my father. So my father is diabetic. He has heart conditions. He has a lot of things going on. When I helped him fill his pill container, I counted over 20 different pills that he has to take. Oh, my God. And pretty, his body is pretty much functioning because of these pills. Why? Because of the things he put into his body. They didn't take care of it. They didn't keep it and sustain it. So when I learn that I can fix me before it gets to this point, mm-hmm. When I counted those pills, that did something for me because I battled with or still sometimes battle with anxiety Mm -hmm. and depression. And I realized it had a lot to do with what I was eating and a lot of deficiencies I had. Vitamin D was a big one. Wow. And that's major. Vitamin D was a big one. And you guys, I had to do this study and on my own, the doctors didn't tell me this. (laughs) No, they're not. And so I started to (laughs) research, why do I have anxiety? What is going on with me? Mm -hmm. And so there was this website, it was called The Healing Site. And it said a lot of women, especially black women, are vitamin D deficient and magnesium deficient. Hmm. So if you start with giving yourself that first, then you'll start to see the difference. Alcohol adds to it as well. This, these fast foods and all this processed food, it messes not only with your insides, but your mind as well. Mm -hmm. So once you start incorporating more vegetables into um, your diet, and then also, you guys, there's roots (laughs) that are good. Like, for example, ginger. Ginger is your friend. Absolutely. I tell people all the time as well, garlic is one of my best friends as well. And turmeric. 
Those mm-hmm. three things, I think they're keeping me alive right now. I honestly think that <laughs> yeah. because I have these things every single day in my life, that's why I'm still alive. Still here. Still because here. they have completely, when I changed the way I um, was eating, I also was able to change the way I was able to think. My mind became clear. I became right. more productive. I had more energy. I wasn't as grumpy. I wasn't as groggy. So it, it truly makes a difference. And to be able to grow it yourself, you know what's right. in it. In a day and time where we don't even know if this food is real anymore. That's true. And a lot of it's not. We truly, like, we're like, all right, well, I'm, I'm it's say organic, so I'm going to just hope for the best. But in all honesty, I found out that all they have to do is use one organic product to grow these organic things that they're selling in the store, and they can label it organic. That's that true. doesn't mean that it's truly organically grown. Right. And so the only way to know that it is, is, as you said, to grow it yourself. Grow it yourself or locally. I think, um, you know, and, then, and that's because that's one of the things is access to, you know, but being in touch with your farm. Back, back when we first started civilizing ourselves, the mm-hmm. farms were the center of communities. People knew the farmers. They knew where the food was growing. They knew what was growing, what was in season. It was just a natural sort of knowledge, too. Right. And, and, and connection with that food. Because, like, you're in different, different demographics. You may need different type of foods, you know, and that's why that environment grows certain type of, you know, vegetables or whatnot. Right. I mean, granted, I know, you know, with the build, like us having controlled environments now, we can actually uh, adjust that, you know, as far as hydroponics and stuff. But, right. But the access to the food, the knowing the food, growing it yourself, like that changed my life. I remember when I first um, when I first decided, OK, this is what I'm doing. I'm not doing anything else in architecture, but this I don't care how long it's going to take. You know, I had someone to point me in the direction of, a, you know, a local farmer and talk to her. And her, one of her the major questions that she asked me when I was like, you know, trying to jump in right yeah you know she was like well have you ha- first of all do you, are you a vegetarian and are you a vegan and i was like well no not at all and she's like have you ever grown anything yourself and i was like actually no you know and then the, and that started the whole journey of me you know going figuring out how do i grow in my in my own home you know is it difficult and it's really not you know plants need the same environment that we need that's it they need the same environment that we're comfortable with so for the most part Foods that you grow in your that you want and you can grow in your living room, you know. But of course, it's all about looks. It's all about how easy it is for you to be able to operate it and stuff right, like that. Right. But I think staying open to what we have coming now and and demanding things to to change, you know, as far as our access to the fresh foods is so necessary. Like that's the only way things are gonna shift, you know. Like yeah. I even feel like leaning on the grocery stores, like you said, is not necessarily the safest way because we can't necessarily trust them, you know, necessarily trust that this food, like you say, is the best thing. But having it locally and supporting local farmers or supporting the local uh, urban farms that will be popping up are something that's more important than than you than I can imagine. I mean, that I can explain right now. Right. You know what I mean? And I'm um, guilty because of my busy life. Convenience mm-hmm. yeah, is convenience grocery is stores. Everything. Yeah. Convenience is grocery stores. And so you have. I know there's an, um, I believe that urban farm is right by where my mom lives. It's on Tonopah, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I, I've driven past there. Mm-hmm. And I think I only stopped one time. Right. But but you know what? I And that's one of the things that I'm moving, trying to, that's what I'm moving with in regards to playing with my partner. Because we still have to be realistic, you know. It's still about appeal. It's right, still about right. what attract what's attracting. You know, we can't expect that the old traditional type of farm is gonna attract urban people. Right. You know? Right. And that's where the transition and the design and stuff like that comes in and plays a part because, you know, you have to make it look good, you know, and not and not to say, oh, just just for looks, but it's no, because it, it feels different. Absolutely. It feels different, you know, experiencing it, you know, even like, um, so it's just like, so I, I understand that, Bear, because I had the same thing, you know, I'm mm-hmm. like, well, shoot, I want to do this, but man, I don't want to go to any of these farms, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's dirty, it's hot, you it's got bugs, say it's hot got, outside. You know, it's all kind of stuff, you know, but, you know, with technology, it's opened up a whole nother world of opportunities, Absolutely. you know, and so um, that's been the biggest journey, it's just trying to figure out how to make it easy and how to make it beautiful. 
simple, you know, and how to make it immediate so that it's just right there. Like literally, yeah, okay, clip it off. The roots are still there and pulling, you know what I mean? Right. Like that sort of, that's the trick and that's the magic, I think, to us transitioning from where we have, where we have become uh, after Industrial Revolution to where we are now and where we're going into the future. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, but it is appeal. It's all about appeal. It is. It absolutely <laughs> yeah. is, isn't it? It's nowadays we are all so much go 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 and everything is at the touch of your finger Absolutely. you can order your groceries online and go to the store and pick them up yes. like it's yeah. just that easy now and mm-hmm. so even though we know it would be so much better if we just took that little moment drove mm-hmm. a little further <laughs> went to the farms or even went to like the better stores that are gonna have the fresh locally grown it's like, nah, because that's going to cost me like 10 more dollars than if I was just to go to this Walmart right here and yes. I just don't have it. And me and my husband finally kind of broke ourselves out of that. Yeah. So we before were buying whatever we could afford, like whatever yeah. was cheap. But then I realized we can afford to eat better. Right, because your health, your health uh, is going to be making Abs- you pay for that. If yeah, you and I, I had yeah. to be the one to go through it. Mm-hmm. When I say my anxiety got so bad, I used to drive myself to the hospital like once a week because I thought I was dying. It was bad. Wow. Like, mm-hmm. truly, truly bad. And That's I crazy. think the food we eat has so much to do with mental health. And I'm big on mental health. That's one of the things that I will always talk about, push for, and educate people as much as I can. No, I don't have the PhDs in it and the masters, but I have experience. Exactly. So nobody, more than nobody can <laughs> tell me what doesn't work because I, I had to research this myself. Absolutely. And the, the, um, the, certain canned goods and the boxed mm-hmm. mac and cheese. And when mm-hmm. we grew up eating the hamburger helper and yes. all that stuff and, and the spam, <laughs> exactly all this stuff, of course. And y'all know I, I'm going to get a little deep cause I'm never really polit- um, politically correct, but all this stuff was designed for black people to only be able to, to have because mm-hmm. we're not supposed to be mentally strong. We're not supposed to be mentally sound. We're supposed to be kept in bondage period so why not attack them at the source which is the food because we need food to survive so let's make all this bad stuff affordable for them so this is all that they can eat this is all they have access to absolutely and i'm here to let you guys know you absolutely can afford to eat right Mm -hmm. start with the small things so instead of you love mac and cheese instead of buying the box Mm -hmm. buy some real cheese get some (laughs) macaroni noodles you can get a big bag of macaroni noodles for like two bucks Right. And make your own. Absolutely. And so it's like, yeah, it it costs a little more, Mm -hmm. but it tastes better, number one. It does. And number two, you don't have all these color number yellow five and red eight and all these things you can't pronounce and none of that's in there anymore. It's it's (laughs) real mac exactly, (laughs) real mac and cheese. And so like I said, you don't have to go full vegan and vegetarian. I'm not telling you that. All I'm saying is you absolutely can do just a little bit better. So now when we buy our meats. We're a little bit more picky on the meats we buy, not just I'm going to get the bag of chicken because it's cheaper. No, I'm looking at is it hormone free? Was it grass fed? Even with the eggs, grass fed chickens. Are they are they caged? Because these caged ones are disgusting. They come with diseases. They come with all this other stuff. Chickens are supposed to just roam and they produce better eggs that way. So we drive all the way out to like the um, Gilcrest area Uh and they have real chicken eggs. They got goose eggs. They got ostrich eggs. They got all (laughs) kinds of eggs for you. I didn't even know. I I love duck eggs. y'all. I just want to let y'all know it's one of my favorite right now. They are delicious and they're real big too. So you only need one. (laughs) But we had to educate ourselves and it was because of my health. My health awakened the household. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm happy it happened to me because I was strong enough to handle it and I'm wise enough to know I need to research these things. Yeah. And now I'm just working on my kids because, like, my kids like all the bad stuff right. and the candy and the Slurpees I mean, the and the Takis. And so I'm like, you know, they're kids, <laughs> but then I'm like, but to a certain extent, I mm-hmm. need y'all to also kind of eat this good Be stuff. Be more aware. Absolutely. Yeah. And it, just, it helps to start when they're younger, you know. Like, yes. You know, but as you said, you learned it later. I mean, and at this point, it's just... Putting in the work. And I think a lot of people, that's what they're afraid of, mm-hmm. is putting in the work to figure it's work. out how to make yourself healthy, how to find the, mo- the right foods, you know, mm-hmm. how to invest in the right things. The um, One of the, the statistics that I found, too, 
when I that was convincing was realizing where the food deserts were and the income levels. And so you know how you were mentioning, oh, in certain areas, you know, like they that's basically what they want to see. Like literally by the map, you know, if you look right. at the map, even of Vegas, mm-hmm. you know, you could see the incomes and where the fresh foods were yes. available, yep. where there was no fresh foods, anywhere in sight, just convenience stores. Yep. I mean, it's and it's it's crazy. So yeah, you may have to drive outside your neighborhood Absolutely. for the moment. Absolutely. But you also could start to actively you know, make a statement that you want more things to be brought into that community, you know, or be it take an initiative of that, you know, but you're, you're definitely, uh, you're definitely right. You know, like you have to, um, just take that journey, like drive. You do. And <laughs> you guys, drive. you can make a day out of it. <laughs> like when I know I need to go to Sprouts or Whole Foods, I'm like, all right, so this going to be about a 30 minute drive. What else can I do on that side of yeah. town? I'm making a whole day out of it. I'm not Seriously. just going there. I'm going to make a whole day. Cause we were living, um, in Summerlin. We had access to, there would be farmers markets at mm-hmm. the park we lived by. There was literally five minutes away. We had a Sprouts, a Whole Foods. There would be like orange orange stands and people selling strawberries like just all over the area well because we needed a a bigger house and bigger houses are more affordable if you go on the east side we moved far (laughs) east but we moved like far east like where we can reach out and touch the mountains (laughs) and it's like when you come down the hill of course you're hitting like nellis and lamb and there are no there's no sprouts anywhere there's no whole foods anywhere one thing i do appreciate is my Mexican people on the corner with the fresh fruit and the oranges <laughs> because that's where I can go to get it. But right. that's because they come from farming. Yeah, yeah They farm yeah. in Mexico. That's yeah. what they know. That's what they do. Yep. And so that's the only time I can really know that my fruit was grown somewhere and that they cut it up and box it up or they got the fresh oranges that they have there, you know, people bring. Uh, and I'm like, all right, well, I trust your stuff more than I trust the grocery store. So I'm going to go ahead and support you, especially because you're really doing something. I like anybody who hustles. But right. on the east side, <laughs> nothing. The freshest mm-hmm. you can, even the stuff they put inside of the Smiths there. Mm-hmm. I love Smiths. If I go to like a grocery store, major corporation, I like Smiths because they actually do sell locally grown or as far as California, mm-hmm. Mexico, grown yeah. fruits and vegetables. So I will go there before I go anywhere else. Yeah. But the type of fruits and vegetables I have access to at the Smiths on the east side It's not the same as when I was in Summerlin. When I was in Summerlin, I had such a... They sold fresh jackfruit there. They sold (laughs) passion fruit. And I'm like, just all these... They had a whole exotic fruit area. Where is that on the east side? How how do you know they don't want to try the exotic fruit? Or they won't buy the exotic fruit? There's exotic people on the the east side too, you guys. (laughs) Absolutely. And I'm one of them. And I like to try fruits and vegetables. Like, I absolutely do. So I, I definitely think it's something. And I'm sure it's not just in Las Vegas. I'm sure it's no, all over the it's, United it's, States. Yes, it is nationwide. Absolutely. And it, it, it sucks. Mm. And it, it definitely needs to be brought more aware. But the thing is, is do these people care as much as I do? Right. I mean, they won't until they go to the doctor and realize it. But the scary part is that by the time they get to the doctor, you know, who do they trust? Are they trusting the doctor's medicine yep. or will they trust the naturalist? You know, and most yep. people dismiss the natural this initially, you know, and which is crazy. It's like, you know, how could you, you know, you're, you're nature's body, exactly. you know, you're a body of nature. <laughs> Come on, you know, allow yourself to be reset by you the need flesh it. of you the need earth. It. Yeah. You know, and I, and I think that that's, you know, that's just that one thing, that level of trust that I feel like propaganda and stuff kind of have a lot to deal with, you know, what people trust, but you have to do research on your own and, and technology and the way that our world is, it's kind of like, created a society of people who don't necessarily trust themselves. They trust only what's being said to them. And they're lazy. You know? And they're very <laughs> lazy. I'm just putting that yeah. out there. And I mean, and it's like a trickling lazy. So it's like, you know, they're lazy mentally and, and physically. Yep. And then the physical is like, well, like we say, it's starting with the food. So if they don't choose to, to change their foods, you know, even if you're sitting here saying, yo, that is not good for you. Like that's actually clouding your mind. I guarantee it. Like, oh, well, I'm thinking fine right now. Well, <laughs> all right. Well, if you. That's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the response would be that you is know, hilarious. I mean, it's not so funny, crazy. but it's real. It's so, so real. So often, so often, you know, you have no idea how many conversations I've had with people in regards to that, you know. And I've even had to have my own, sh- my own scare, like body scare, to where I'm like, shoot, I need to even further change my diet, you know, like to go a little bit more into mm-hmm. like the specifics of what I'm consuming in order to heal myself. But I also realize how much more of a long term effect that it has when you go 
go natural. You know, when you go natural, you change your diet, then you don't have to have the sustaining medication that, that they say you'll never be able to get to, to stop yeah. using after a while. And it's know? true because it, that, that medication, it, it tricks your body. It does. Now your body believes we need this every day or we're not going to be able to function. Yep. And unfortunately for a lot of those people, they're afraid to let go of the medication because that withdrawal process, yeah. it's real. It's like stopping cocaine it's pain. or crack. It's pain. It's, it goes th- you go through something when you, when you start, have to break away from absolutely. that. Absolutely. When I, cause I, I just started, I tried this thing and, and once I changed the next day, I was like, okay, I'm going to fast. I'm going to change my diet. I literally felt like I had the flu for probably about three days, you know, but after that third day, completely different, even the symptoms of, you know, of what I was going through, just move. It stopped immediately, you know? And wow. so it's like things like that, but you have to have faith. You mm-hmm. know, I was listening to, um, I was listening to a, a YouTuber. I, I wish I would know cause it, it would be better right now to say it, you know, but one of the YouTube ladies and that was when, when they was given her a, a natural remedy, she was like, you know, you have all of these things, but what you need to make sure you always include is faith. Mm-hmm. is belief yes. you know because you know a lot and that's a whole nother topic but you know when it comes to your thought and what your body vibrates as truth that will help you know nature work with itself to actually fix and regulate yep. you know your, your 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 body and so and i think a lot of people because medicine you just pop the pill and you don't think twice about it it's like oh i need i have a headache i'm gonna go take them title now and you it's already just a just know. yeah it is i already know it's gonna help make it better you know you no work mm-hmm. done because the root forward. cause is still there yeah but your headache is if your headache is derived by the your patterns of thought or something that you're eating that you don't even yeah. know your body's just like yeah i don't like that stuff stop <laughs> eating all that sugar you know what i mean exactly like you know you won't ever know until you know until you actually sit back you know and evaluate yourself and you know and and try try faith you know or try try changing your habits and changing your faith in, I like in that. your body try faith yeah. that's that's real try that's gonna be hash that's my hashtag <laughs> it's gonna be yes. try faith no seriously when you said you had the flu-like symptoms i did yeah. a a three-day juice cleanse mm-hmm. where it was literally just vegetable and fresh fruit juice mm-hmm. like mason jarred pressed juice from real fruits and water mm-hmm. that's all i have for three days wow mm-hmm. when i tell you that first day <laughs> <laughs> The first day I was cussing myself out. I'm like, Whitney, did you really think you were going to do this? But then I had to get back into a place. Faith. Whitney, you got this. Yes. Mind over matter. You absolutely have this. All you have to do is only three days. You've been alive how many days? You can do this (laughs) for it's just three days. It's not even half of the week. It's three days, not three and a half, just three days. You just got to get through this for three days. And it, I had to be around food, and my family was still eating, and they were still. I started to cook dinner, <laughs> and guess what? I'm cooking and I'm drinking my juice. I'm cooking <laughs> and drinking my juice, and yeah, I'm, I'm feeling some kind of way. But I just had to remind myself, like, do you want to live or die? Absolutely. And I, I keep telling myself, like, I eat to live. I don't live to eat. So I have to make sure that what I'm putting inside now. My friends laugh at me now because I, I still have my days where I eat kind of like, you know, whatever I want. Right. And it, it was right. hard at first. And I did it because I literally got way too big and it mm-hmm. was uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. For me, it was mm-hmm. uncomfortable so for me. on your free will and I, what you want yeah, to do. Yeah, and I, I was tired all the time and hurting mm-hmm. all the time. And I realized all this inflammation is because of all this gross stuff that I have Mm -hmm. inside of me. Your body's like fighting viruses. It's like we're eating foods that literally our bodies respond to it like it's poison, Mm -hmm. you know? And and that's what it's doing. So your body's fighting a virus or it feels like it's fighting a virus. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And you guys, I'm not perfect. I still eat chicken. I eat, (laughs) I still eat all (laughs) kind of stuff. And I do still have cocktails from time to time. So I'm just letting you guys know I'm not jumping in and saying, oh, I'm doing this and I'm no, no. But I, I'm making better choices. Yes, bit by I'm, bit. I'm a small, little by little, step by step. I am making better choices. I'm making sure my household is making better choices. Mm-hmm. We don't really buy juice that often in our house. Mm-hmm. Our kids get it every once in a while. It's like a reward. Yeah. We drink water. Sugar. Yeah. We drink a lot of water in and our house. Water, <laughs> a what lot realized, of water in our house. The more water that you drink, the more you want. You know? Absolutely. And the more it tastes better. I don't, I don't know what that is. You know, and the now you can tell the me. difference between water. Yes. Like yeah. the good water that's real <laughs> and then the cheap water. You're like, no, I don't like that cheap yeah, stuff. Nah, I need to get some real like water. water. Yeah, I don't want that. <laughs> Where's this from? It's coming from. Now you're a water connoisseur. No, absolutely. Absolutely. With those habits, they'll change over time. You just have to, just like everything, you build it up you have to build it up and be patient absolutely and you know what will help that 
you also touched on um, or wrote to me with some of the things you wanted to talk about is the impact of social media and how it plays into society. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that the reason why a lot of people are becoming more aware of the bad food is because of social media. Mm -hmm. Social media is, is helping wake people up when it was meant to dumb us down. Oh yeah. They tried literally, they Mm -hmm. try it literally was like, really? That's what it is? Well, I remember when the videos first started circulating of how they slaughter the cows. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. People were like, that's how Dude. it happens? Mm-hmm. And from that, I literally have about seven associates that do not eat meat anymore. Since they watched mm-hmm. that video, they don't eat meat. Truth is powerful. Now, y'all, I wasn't um, one of those. <laughs> <laughs> But no, honestly, <laughs> the fact that just seven that I know, there's probably so many oh, more. Yeah. They were like, oh, no. Yeah, I'm I'm going to have to let Done. that go. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to completely let that go. Mm-hmm. But social media is powerful. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think a little too powerful. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I, I personally feel like one of the things that I, I love is that it's starting to show the true heart and, and uh, character of who we are as yes. humans. Yes. Yes. You know, like that beautiful, like I love how you let it off with how uh, it's actually helping people become more aware mm-hmm. about food as opposed to all the negative stuff that, you know, we do have to shift through. Exactly. Shift through. But it's being more and more saturated. And maybe it's our, our, our world of people, you know, because, you know, the our generation you know, is something special, though. Yo, it's amazing. We are something you know, special. It, it's amazing. You know, it's like it gives you more high hopes because I feel like what the social media does is it allows us to be ourselves on filter, you know, like, you know, before social media we only had what they gave us Mm -hmm. what they edited what they wanted us to see Mm -hmm. how they wanted us to see it now they can't put their hands and they tried with net neutrality and i was so proud of us for standing up and being like you know what this is not gonna work i'm sorry (laughs) it's way too far you know because the gentleman who came up with the world wide web he did it so that it can be free for Mm -hmm. people and so that people can share information across the board you know but one of the things there they just always try to do is control 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 you know but like i said the beautiful thing is the heart is just starting to seep through you know and like that this information we can't stop it you know like to if you whatever you want to know you know you can find out out. you can find out yeah so so now in regards to the movement of the food like yeah literally i I mean just type in anything you could type in whatever fruits vegetables whatever you know even not even just scroll it right exactly it comes across so i think that's a it's going to be the major help in regards to our transition and our evolution over time it will as long as we're careful with it we have to make sure that we are careful with it because um as much as it can help us it can also hinder us Mm -hmm. because we become so dependent off on social media we become dependent number one just on our electronics alone Mm -hmm. for knowledge and things that we're seeking i don't even know too many people that actually read real books anymore yeah, I love books. I like to fill the pages. I like turn the pages. Yeah, right. I still buy bookmarks. That's the nerd in me. I have a cute <laughs> bookmarks with like little tassels on them. Like I yeah, like bookmarks. Right, right. But everyone's like, well, no, I can just download it, you know, on my Kindle. And but to Listen. me, it's not the same. Mm-hmm. And um, listening to it, that's cool, y'all. But to me, there's nothing like actually reeling and reading those words and filling those pages. Yeah. And sometimes I think that social media also allows people to pretend um yes. and um give false perception of who they are and then they forget who they are and they lose track or disconnect with reality right. now they're trying to keep up with this image they put out so now they're driving themselves crazy, crazy. and then here comes anxiety depression. and here comes mm-hmm. depression Absolutely. and then boom they're suicide yep. Because now they've been exposed. They're really not this person right. that they were trying to portray. So now really live with they're that. like, I got to kill myself because yeah. I, I can't do it anymore. Right. And that, that's, I know that sounds extreme, you guys, but it's happening. Like in Every real day, life, it is happening. That cyber bullying, it's real. It's, it's, it's so too real. real. And you guys, it's starting with babies. It's and, not even the adults that I'm talking about right now. I'm talking about even prior to hitting high school. Mm-hmm. These middle school kids are feeling like they are living real world 
problems mm -hmm. and it has a lot to do with social media my kids are not allowed on social media they, yeah they don't i'm need old it. school they, they're, they're not like, allowed we, we grew up without it and we're, I, we're and the we're, generation that's changing things exactly. you know what i mean so i exactly definitely should be a barrier some sort of barrier especially when it comes to age because this is like what you say you know even the comparison to other people's lives and that that fake yes life, that, it, it that becomes, you said it you that know comparison self cyber bullying <clears throat> that starts to happen you're yes. bullying yourself like what are you doing in your life look at them and it's just like there is that illusion, you know, that a lot of people like that younger generation have. A lot of them don't even know life without it. They don't. You know, they can't even imagine. They see a real house phone and they're like, what's that? <laughs> right. Like, what are we supposed to do with this? Seriously. No, seriously. When in my house, all we had was that house phone with the long cord. The long and it went from room to room. From the kitchen <laughs> to your mama's room to the And if you had <laughs> a cordless in your house, you was making it, honey. Oh, y'all. That was the upgrade. That yeah. was a true. But you're right. We didn't have, there were no social media platforms. No. If you wanted to make a friend. You yeah. went and talked to the person. Yeah, you, go you go play. Outside, knock on the door. Hey, you knew? You right. Come out and play? Exactly. You know? They don't like, have that anymore. Yeah. And I tell my kids all the time, I feel so bad for you guys. And I'm not trying to say it in a, in a bad way, but all you know is Seriously. to be, I guess, certified as something. You got to get a lot of likes. Absolutely. You got to have yeah. the right picture to be valid. And it, it's like, now I, I see like with my Instagram, my pictures used to be all over the place mm -hmm. and I'm like, okay, well, Whitney, in order to get people to come, it has to look a certain way. So now I got to work with how I post it. So now to me, social media is not a, a validation. Now social media to me is a job. And it's a strategy. It's I a need job, to brand absolutely. myself. So this is a part of my job. Yeah. So now I'm not going to look at social media anymore, how everybody else does. Now mm -hmm. for me, it's just a networking tool. Right. Exactly. It is now something to help me brand myself. I will not get lost in social media. Right. That's what like, I have to tell myself offering? every morning. Right. I am not going to get lost in social media. Right. When I catch myself scrolling and I'm laying next to my husband, I'm like, why are we not talking to each other? Let me put this phone down for a minute. It happens so often. It does. And it, it's it's awful. And it's common now. Like, at first, it used to be rude, right? Now, yes. people kind of expect it. You know, oh, yep. you're on it? Okay, let me get on mine, too, then exactly. for a little bit, you know? And it's like, I think that, you know, that even goes back to what's the purpose of social media dude it's not for it's not for you to feel good about your life it, what are you platforming and i think that that was one of the things that a lot of people have we have misused is that the broadcasting part yes. What are you broadcasting why you know is it just you you want me to see you and feel like your life is good you know well why do you feel like you need that then that's a whole nother evaluation you need to have separately because at that point yeah you're dependent on the likes what if no one gives you likes you then know how are you gonna feel yeah about you? how are you gonna feel does that does, now is that post just you know have it just reduced in in value to you you know so it's just like one of those things is just got to categorize and understand how you use these tools that we get, you know, like how are you using it to better society or to, to help even expand what it is that you want to bring, Exactly, you know, but I think that that's, that's the big thing because when these kids, I mean, what do they have to broadcast? You, you, right, kids, what, are you, what are you talking about? Oh, look at me. I have this new, you know, video game that nobody else has yet. And then the next kid next door is like, oh shoot, my friend has a video game. Mom, why don't you have the video game? You know, right, it's like, it's, and that's a whole nother yeah, whole different you know, situation. I mean, that's created. I'm not saying we didn't have that because, you know, we had the Jordans and all kind of stuff that we would yes. go to school. You know, be like, oh, man, they check out the kicks. But that's a different way of dealing with it. You're not dealing with it 24-7. And like it wasn't as much pressure. It wasn't as much pressure. It's not sitting there. You're not being ranked. You know, and I, and I think that's the issue, being ranked socially, you know, yes. it's, it's just psychologically for these kids, it just takes away them even f just falling into themselves to learn, look, learn, love yourself first. Mm -hmm. If somebody else don't like it, forget them, you know, you're moving on to the next one, you know, moving on in, with your life because there'll be plenty of people who do. Right. And you don't right. need thousands. You don't need millions. Do you know all of those millions? Right. Do you know all of those thousands of people? I was just you know? telling people I got 2,000 some of my friends on Facebook and I interact with maybe 80. See? Maybe yeah. 80 of them I you interact know I mean? with. And and that's the part, quality control, you know, like what are the what are the things that you're allowing to affect and impact your life? You know, the quality of your life, you know, it's just like because you could literally be more happy. I, I'm sure most of us would be more happy just turning it off. And then, I know that's extreme, you know, if you're like, I don't, you know, because I, I don't want to turn it off. Right, you know? right, right. But, but like letting go of it sometimes, like I remember one time I lost my phone and I left it gone for a week. Dude, it felt so free, you know, it's like, <laughs> wait, oh, I can find it. Let me find the heart phone and call somebody hey mama that is fine. So you know funny. like you remember that you keep the quarter you didn't have the cell phone where people can like interrupt right. a conversation like you literally can be in the present having a conversation a deep one too 
Someone call. Oh well, this is important, so I have to. I have to answer. Excuse me. You know what I'm saying, right? Yeah. So it's just like that level. You know, the social media is just it's so many. It's just like it's like that gun idea. You know, it could be the thing that you point to your head or the thing that helps you bring home the meal. You know, right. So you you have to find the balance with it. You have to make sure that it doesn't control you. Absolutely. You have to control it. Yes. And when you feel it, I feel it. As soon as you start feeling that anxiety, just turn it off. It's not real. It's really not. You know? It's they, not. It's, it's not. It's not. They can pull the plug on the internet wherever the internet is, whoever is generating that thing. Right. <laughs> they can pull it up. And, all, and the people, whole world will so go sad away. So many people would be lost. They would go They crazy. wouldn't even know what to do. People would. Man. People don't know how to look at look through the phone book no more to find listings of like How many numbers do you remember now? <laughs> How many numbers can you even remember? I actually now? know all my importance. You know what? Oh, cool. I know all I my importance. Know mine. I know my, my mother's the original number. I knew my father's, my husband's, and my grandfather's. Then my go-to's. Mm-hmm. Anybody else? It really don't even matter when everything hits the fan. Yeah, them the people I need to be able to call. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, even maps and stuff like that. You know, just small things. I think you know, even psychologically, with our minds being able to use it. Yeah, like I think that the more that we use these tools, the more we reduce our you know self dependency and and mm-hmm. our and our potentials. Like the amount of uh, mental capacity that we had back then. Like I love the movie with uh, what was it, Taraja P Henson, uh, Janelle Monae. Um, when they were oh yes the, um, uh, oh goodness how did I forget um, um, I'm mad um, we both are having that moment and I, I know the movie because I just watched it NASA and um, what was it called how am I forgetting um, <clears throat> that is awful yes oh. That is so awful. And you know why it's awful? Because normally we would get on the phone and go through Google. Oh, right. And Google going to tell us what the movie is. But yeah, I'm but, so. But memory, you know, there you go. Our right memory there. is lost just like that. Oh, my God. But so. Y'all know, see, it's real. We just had a moment. Seriously. A for real moment. But with that. I was. I wanted to bring it up because of the computer. How they were the computers. They were the computers. They were the computers. You know, and that that part alone is like that shows the potential. You yes. know, and now we don't even we don't even try to use it that much. You know, like directions. I'm I'm pretty sure it takes me probably like a couple. I'm working on it. It took me a couple of times to remember how to get somewhere. But when I had that map though. And I had to, you know, use find my way through the streets. Right, I would right. remember how to get to a place like that, you know. And I think that that's because it's the practice. That's because it's the trust, you know, trusting your right. own mind, trusting your own memory. Um, hidden figures. Boom. Hidden figures. Without Google. Without Look at that, Google. y'all. Without Google, y'all. I, got, I, was, I was determined Woo. to get it. There we go. Yes, hidden figures. It shouldn't yeah. have took me that long, y'all. Yeah. Damn. It shouldn't. But you got it. You know, I, I, got was, it. I, I hadn't got it yet. <laughs> I'm still working on it. On it. But yeah, just th- those things. It, it just shows, you know, a lot of, uh, of of what we have in our potentials as our as far as our minds and what we are actually reducing. I feel like we're kind of retracting because of you know our new technologies. But just like kids can't tell yourself. time on the regular clocks. Oh yes, oh, they they look at it and they're like, hey, what time is it? Mm, they sure do. And I, I found that out. My husband <clears throat> told me that I because <laughs> he's a teacher. The kids don't know how. To really tell time on that clock. They look at their cell phones or they, they look do. to their little Apple watches. And that's how they figure out what time it was. That used to be a part of school. Oh, yeah. Now Absolutely. they took it out because everything is digital. It's crazy. But what if they go somewhere and that's all there is? And In Europe, no there's a lot of just, you know, the regular clocks. And a lot of and clocks. <laughs> there's no digi- big digital clocks. It's not like going to New York City where, yeah, everything. But in Europe or even um, if you, let's say you wanted to finally take your trip to Africa, you're mm-hmm. not going to see all this digital nope, everywhere. Not. You're going to have to get back to the basics mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. really know. And my, my fear is that they are not going to be able to. And I, I always tell my husband, I said, we are very lucky yes. to have grown up in the generation we that we did. We were the generation. last generation we to really wake were. up for, like they said, Saturday morning cartoons. <laughs> yes. And y'all not going to be in my house all day. <laughs> Go, go ahead outside. and go outside. Yeah, and we'd right. be outside all it could be so hot, y'all. Oh but God. we were Find out there. Way. We were waiting for that popsicle Talk truck to roll through. Freezing know? Kool-Aid in the refrigerator so <laughs> yes. we could have some cool later. Like waiting for the ice cream. We, truck yeah, we enjoyed it. And I said, <laughs> even there was some days where I think I just sat on the meter box mm-hmm. and we just sat there and just we didn't draw on the dirt. Do. But yeah, we, no, yeah, we would we, we were real kids. <laughs> yeah. And it's like now I watch my son and it's like he feels like he is having the worst punishment if he can't watch TV. 
And yeah, so man. he he broke his he he's broke two TVs. So I told my husband, we're not my husband's like, we're not buying another one. He said he's gonna learn how to really be a kid. Mm-hmm. He's gonna learn how to play with his toys. He's gonna read. He's gonna write. He's gonna just be a kid. Mm-hmm. And so he feels like he is being punished when he has to go to his room and just play. That's great. Living with the mind. And that's crazy because I remember I used to play Barbies for just hours. Mm -hmm. Like, I had all the Barbies too, y'all. The cases, the cars, the men, the babies. I had all of them. I had everything. All the special occasions. (laughs) Right. I could literally play all day. My imagination was crazy. And I think that's why we have a generation of so many entrepreneurs because we had imaginations. We were forced to create things. We had Legos. We played with puzzles. And so it's Mm -hmm. like we really had to put our minds to work, which is why we are such great creators. So that's why when I see people in my generation being so lazy, I'm like, but why? No, we were know given good. We were given good tools. Right. It's these babies that I'm worried about. So They're that's why robbed. I make sure like my daughter's sitting outside the door. Now I want you to see that I'm doing these things because you can do it, too. I want you to know that it's not just what Instagram says right. or what You're Facebook says. Of, no, yeah, what it's what see. Gianni says on the inside. Whatever it is that you want to do, do that. Mm-hmm. I allow my kids to be free. They are allowed to have opinions to a certain extent, mm-hmm. but I let them express themselves. If you're upset, tell me why. And right. a lot of that is missing. Yeah. Express yourself. And it's just like, like, here, take ah. this tablet and go play. They're like, can I send an emoji? <laughs> right. Exactly. And it's like, no, tell me. I need you to talk to me. Like, yeah, it's, What's I mean, going it is, on? It is a strain using that part of the mind. But like the more that you use it, the better it is. Yes. You know, like, man, sacrifice and imagination. I cannot imagine a world without it. You know, I cannot imagine a world without imagination. And that's one of the things that's that's being lost. I, it I can is. Imagine, it like, is. Seeing towards us go out of business that is sad crazy like that's it was really a sad like, moment I like unbelievable to me you like know? toys r us was like gucci to us back yeah. then. like that I was mean, if you got to go to toys like, r us oh, like yeah. a store full of toys like yes. you mean there's nothing but toys in here oh my god i'm going straight to the barbie it's aisle. Gonna, i'm explode. but it's like gonna, yeah it's, it is and I, I and i'm so thankful before it closes doors we used to take our my son often. He got to go in, in there and walk through the aisles and pick out whatever he wanted, you know, for his birthday or whatever. So we got to see this. And it's like, but it's gone now. It's not there. It's not. I, I, it's unbelievable. It's like, I don't know. I, I just, because I ran to the one over there off of Maryland and Flamingo. And mm-hmm. I just, I remember sitting there staring and like, that's one of the things I would have never believed. I remember the song, you know, I don't want to grow up. I'm a Toys R Us yep. kid. I remember <laughs> the moment I had a, I had a moment where I cried because I was like, I don't want to grow up. I want to always be able to play with my toys, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like no kid they don't have they won't ever be able to have that experience where it's like their attachment to their toys i mean maybe when they're babies you know right. but as soon as that tablet comes into their life it, those toys are it. like that's like all i need yeah what's the point you know there's a there's a toy truck right here and i'm gonna push this toy truck over this this you know fake pal right here instead right. of actually, actually getting that physically yeah yep. and playing with that digger and you know turning on the the different noises that it can make and my son has to do all of that that's right and he, he has should. a whole toy box full like, of cars trucks everything mm-hmm. he has such an imagination yes. such and i need him to keep that because it helps you manifest, too. I yes. really believe it helps manifest. You know, it goes beyond the world of illusion. That's a conceptual world, you know? Absolutely. Like, that was one of the, like, for for me, even with architecture, you know, it's like I've had so many conversations about this stuff, and people are like, oh, you know, I'm like, well, all of my stuff right now is concept. You see it here. Yeah, it looks mm-hmm. beautiful, da-da-da. But it's not real until you touch it, yep. you know? And so that whole relation, too, with kids, children, you know, look, you need to help them be able to touch it. If they're going to create some art, yeah, they can get it on a notepad, but get some paint in their hands. Let them yep. know what I'm it so takes. I'm so glad you're you know? saying this. I'll make sure my daughter listens to all of this. No, seriously. All of this, because she's a true creative. And when yeah. she was younger, people wondered why I always bought her books to draw and um, stuff to like make yarn bracelets and just whatever, because I, I know she's a creative. Yeah. I knew this from a very young age. Yeah. She used to color so amazingly. She is a creative. The girl can write songs. Like she, See? so I still, I'm like, Gianni, have you, when was the last time you read? When was the last time you read mm-hmm. a book? Why don't you write me something? Don't, don't buy me a birthday card. Can you make me one? Right. I right. feed into her gifts because I know she has them and I don't want them to fade away because I know how easy it is in yeah. today's society. And if you are listening and you have kids, 
Stop allowing your kids to be raised by technology. Absolutely. It is completely awful. It's creating robots. I am speaking from experience because I was so consumed in all of my businesses, I was not as available to my children, which is why I have scaled back because I need to be available to them. Nobody's yes. going to feed into your kids more than you are. Nobody's yeah. going to believe in them more than Nobody should believe in your kids more than you do. Mm -hmm. And in this generation of time where we have awful food, we have social media telling them what's what. The stuff that's on TV now. Oh, what happened? There's no innocent cartoons anymore, you guys. Right. Unless oh. you're watching Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. That's about like all there is. That's Mickey is still Disney. It's still I've watched the show. It's still pretty good. You're all right with that. But once you get to these other shows that come on, I was watching with my son. I'm like, what is this about? Oh, no, son. I don't want you to watch this. No right. More. Yeah. This, this, this ain't this ain't going to work. They we get gonna exposed very young. It is. It's a, it's a lot. And you're wondering why your kids are acting out or why yeah. they're talking crazy and why they're doing all these things and why they don't aspire to be anything in life. Right. And they get to the school and they have other kids just like exactly. them. That confirms that they should And it's, it's awful. Not but my kids have but, dreams. Mm -hmm. Like my son told me he's going to be a policeman and a firefighter. Work it out, son. Hey, Whatever you feel you're going to do, gonna do <laughs> that's what you're going to do. Right. My daughter, she was like, well, mom, I'm going to play basketball, but I'm also going to sing and I'm going to act. All right, girl, we're going to work it out. Do Which it one we going to start with first? I, lo I, I, I love got that it. you're one of those parents because so many people like to say, hey, focus on one. Now, I get it. You know, you centralize your, your focus. But right, right. But don't give up on the other one. Yeah, Absolutely. we're multifaceted. You know, like having those things going on, like our brains are amazing. And the more that we put on it and the more that we trust it, yes. the more we can do with it. And being a parent, you are the first line, you know, to... Getting that soldier, if you're going to call your kid yes. a soldier, <laughs> in the right condition yep. to be a great asset to our society, you know. And it's like it's, uh, so many parents, they um, depend on the teachers to do it. Oh but these my teachers God. have yes. hundreds of students. So and hundreds many. of students just like your child and they're struggling with different stuff. All kind of yes. different. There's no way for them to be able to direct them in the right direction, you know. They may be able to save a few. Yeah, yeah. And just for that moment yeah. that they're and, with them. But yeah, then when they walk out amazing, those school doors. That's then it. what? What they the what classes happens? last what fifty minutes? Yep. You know, and it's just like how much magic do you want the teacher to give? And these teachers are doing as much as they can for whatever you know for the access that they have. You know, but and it, it's hard Ooh, when I hear. I mean, like I said, my husband's a teacher. When I hear about some of the things that those kids go through, yeah. I'm like, but why are they handling so much pressure so, so early? Parents are absent a lot of times. Because I've dealt with the high school students. Uh, I've taught during the day for three years and dealing, uh, seeing what they battle with. It's like it's so hard. much compassion. Yeah. You understand a little bit of what they're, they're struggling with, but it's so sad because it's like, why are you dealing with that right now? You got mm -hmm. you have the rest of your life. The rest of your life, your your life is just beginning. Yeah. So they and they, you're you wondering know? like how the bills gonna get paid. Why? Yeah. You know you should be. You're going in sixth get, grade. Get Why are you worried about the bills? Trying to go to the mall. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, man. You know? That's one thing. Shout out to moms. No matter how hard it got, mm. she made it happen. Yeah, my mom too. I no matter she star. have four. My mom too. Yeah, Rock she have sale. four, and Rock it's star. like no matter what, man. Like we know we didn't always live in the best neighborhoods or whatever, but when you walked in our house, it was clean. It smelled like pine saw bleach and garnish number eight, and that's just what it was. Straight up. And so <laughs> that's what I know. So yes. I'm thankful for that. So I'm trying to at least give my kids a little bit. Of what I had. Right. When y'all hear that music playing with mom's off, yeah. you already know it's time to clean up. Hey. Get on up. <laughs> we scrubbed baseboards last week. I don't know what it's going to be this week, but uh, we're going to work it out because I want them to at least have those things that I think kept me a grounded person. And yeah. it's it's getting, making sure that my daughter, like she likes Snapchat, my Snapchat. You can get on mine and take some pictures because right. I know she liked the filters, right. but I don't want you to have your own. And I know you think I'm yeah. being mean, but I don't want social media to control you right now yes, because yeah. you are at a great growing stage right yes. now you everything is either going to make you or break you right. so if i can keep that away from you and that's the one thing i can i can keep that away from you i can eliminate cell phones tablets all no mm -hmm. you don't get it yeah. you had this pen and paper right, though. but i can't take your imagination and exactly go play. <laughs> go play go go you know let me know what it is you're gonna do what you want to be and now that i've taken all that from her she seems more free Yes. And it, it just, it y'all, it makes a difference. Yes. I promise I'm not telling y'all something I'm not doing myself. Mm -hmm. It makes a difference. Yes. These yes. kids are really, it matters right now because and they know as I'm watching, it's scary. 
I'm afraid for my children to grow up because of the amount of the type of people they're going to be around, yeah. the type of people that are so robotic to social media, very robotic, and that literally live through social media and social media only. Yep. I tell people all the time, I am my business self on social media, but I'm still regular old Whitney when I get off. I still wear moo-moos and head wraps at home. Like, I am still <laughs> me. Right. And so I'm still a hot mess at times. I am not pretending to be something else. I have flaws. Right. And so I need my kids to remember that it's okay to have flaws. Absolutely. I need for you all listening to remember it's okay to have flaws. And perfection is necessary. Yes, absolutely. I mean, because what? Once it's perfect, what else is there? What else? To There's grow? nothing else for you to. Exactly. And once you stop growing, then what? You just die after that. Yeah, exactly. And life is about growth. So. Absolutely. Do you solemnly swear to those who hold that other truth? I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Welcome back to another piece of truth moment with, of course, your girl, Lady Truth. And I just want to piggyback off of the show or one of the topics we talked about on the show of the importance of taking care of your body and paying attention to what you put in your body. Now, I'm not saying go cold turkey, vegetarian, vegan or anything like that. But you guys, let's take small steps, small steps to greatness. Um, eventually, the small steps will become even bigger and you'll be at that end goal before you even realize it. Number one, water. Start with disciplining yourself to where you're drinking eight glasses of water. You start there, maybe graduate to half a gallon of water. Technically, I guess we're supposed to be drinking half our body weight um, in ounces. Um, I don't think I've made it to that point, but I have accomplished half a gallon a day. And I can let you know it makes me feel so much better because it's helping flushing those toxins. Um, just alone in the air we breathe, you guys, the, the air is not that great. The quality of air is not that great anymore. And then also paying attention to what you eat. Making sure you level out the BS with the substantial food that your body needs to grow and develop. You guys, mental illness is real. And a lot of the things it develops around is what you put in your body. Also, of course, what you surround yourself with as far as her energies and people and stress. But food really matters. If you know you don't eat that many vegetables or if you're allergic to certain things, Supplement that nutrition. There's plenty of supplements. You can even get actual supplements that come from food so that it breaks down like food would in your body. No, it doesn't taste as great as you want it to. But sometimes you just got to, I mean, just work it out. I mean, we take shots of tequila and vodka all the time, right, you guys? So we can take this shot of wheatgrass or take this shot of, you know, some type of substance that will help our body grow and we can become the greatest people that we were destined to be. Not only taking care of your body, but take care of your mind. If you are somebody who is struggling with depression, anxiety, or just being sad and you don't really know what it is or being tired all the time, exercise your mind. And you can exercise your mind by reading affirmations, number one, listening to affirmations, and then also just reading in general. Those are just some of my tips, you guys. Again, it's just truth moment with Lady Truth. And until next time, be good. Well, this has been great. I appreciate having you Likewise. on. This was this, this been... was really good, and Likewise. I'm gonna push this episode major because we we definitely shared a lot that needs Absolutely. to be heard. And before we wrap it up, though, I told you we were gonna do the Fave Five. And yeah, okay, so I okay, want to okay, have okay. the Fave Five, and so I'm going off the top of my head right now. Just some things that I want to know. I want to know who is your favorite poet. My favorite poet is. Can I give two? You can give two. Okay, my Angelo and Nikki Giovanni. I'm going to have to look up some Nikki Giovanni. You don't know Nikki. I don't. Yes, look her up. She's I will. She's one of the originals, too. I will. Yeah, she's still alive, I believe, too. Oh, mm -hmm. well, that makes it even better. Nikki Giovanni, she's, yeah, yes. Okay, absolutely. Thank <laughs> you for that one. Mm -hmm. All right, so what about your favorite? I know you like vegetables. What's your favorite vegetable? Ooh. Um, like one you can eat, like, multiple times throughout the week all day long mm -hmm. i mean i love broccoli you know okay that I, I don't know if i would set call it my favorite though i love all the vegetables <laughs> that's, see, a that's a good question. thing <laughs> that's, uh, let me see let me see though i, I really want to give one one vegetable that i really love is uh i would say i would say squash i love squash yes i like squash yeah. what about your favorite song whether back when you were growing up up into current just one song you hear it and it just no matter what you're feeling it changes your whole everything i love the beginning 
of Erica Badu's bum 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 ba dum. Yep. <laughs> that song I don't think it's ever gonna die out. It's not because even my daughter likes it. So mm-hmm. it's it's moved on from generations. So yeah, yeah, I love that. That's that's one of my like, okay, get the day going. And then my more recent one is Maciago with him with FKJ, uh, Tadow. See, I don't know oh, that. You have to look. That's that's like right now. That's like my go-to. Even for the kids, when I will be with the kids uh-huh. and stuff to calm them down, I play it, and they're like, "Miss, ta-da! Look it up." Okay, well, she's mm-hmm. giving me some stuff. I got some research <laughs> when I get done with this show. What about movie? Favorite movie? Favorite movie. A lot of those. I love the Life of Pi. I enjoyed I that. I like that movie. You know, a lot. Um, I like that movie. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, I'll stick with that. I have a lot because I like the. The ones that move into the minds and play with the dreams, you know, stuff like Inception, sim- yes. similar to that. But okay, yeah, I would say Life of Pi just because it's unique and the isolatedness. And it would be you who picked that yeah. movie. Yeah, all right, all right. <laughs> and then for the last one, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, I guess I would have to ask you, who is your favorite hip hop artist? And when I say hip hop, I'm separating from rap. Hip hop artists, storytellers. Storytellers. Yes. Who is your favorite? I mean, would you consider Lauren Hill hip hop? You know what? Lauren, when Lauren first started, she was hip hop. She was hip hop. So we can just go back to the old Lauren. You know, that's the old that'll school. work. I, I like. I love Lauren. You know, I love going back to her work, even though you know she had one album. But it, that's so and man, that one album though holds still so much substance. Yes, that absolutely. album is greatness. It, it, no, serious, and if I you mean, have like, a daughter, layers. please let your daughter listen to that album. It's everything that, that album, album is dope. Just, I don't know how she did it, but she did it, and she did it with that one album, like literally. And <laughs> that made her name continue to be carried on for yeah. a very long time. Absolutely, absolutely. The um, but yeah, that's that's she's the one who I could I would say I, I would go back to. I mean, I I didn't grow up with hip hop. I grew up a lot with uh, gospel music, and my mom. Was okay, very, so I didn't. Okay. I I got into hip hop in college, strangely. Enough. Wow. Yeah. See, hip hop so, was big in my house. We had Wu Tang going on. We had Biggie, like Tupac. Uh, yeah, Tupac so is a favorite. We though, had you DJ know? Quick. So like I, that's why now when I listen to this new stuff, I'm like, yeah, that's not hip hop. That is rap. Yo. That's that's then some of it I don't even know what to call it. Right. But right. it isn't it's in a genre of itself. I'm just gonna leave it where it's at. Yeah, you no, know, seriously. No, but, yeah. But the, the levels of, of work with like yeah, Tupac, of course, you know, yes. everybody loves him. How and can I, I love him. Yeah, it's like I mean the realness, you know, you you haven't I haven't seen that recently. I don't even I don't even know how long it's been. But just to have that realness, like in how he delivers it, yeah. It was just great. He meant it all. Yeah, he did. And it wasn't just some make believe image. And he was he going was... through a lot of it too. Yes. Like at that time, poof. The stuff that he had to deal with on, you know, on just the real levels of trying to make social change and understanding that, having a mother in Black Panther and Right. That. That's and I tell people people um like Tupac is way more than what y'all think he is. My bad. It's all good. He can edit this out. But Tupac is more than what we thought he was. He was more than just a hip hop artist. He was an activist. He was a poet. He was a revolutionist. Like he, he had a lot. Oh God, he had a lot. He just happened to be before his time. Yeah. If he was now like our generation, Mm -hmm. I think there would be a major level of change if Mm -hmm. he was directing it. Oh yeah. Because he had that much impact. Yeah, especially with all of the social media he would have. And his uh, expense. Man, yes, exactly. All so the right. tools he would have and all the support and following yeah, he would have. Yeah, they couldn't control. They wouldn't be able to control it. At all. I think that was the issue then is that they exactly. controlled everything. So. And they weren't able to control him. Yeah, and they wasn't. Yeah. They that's, were that's not They were they, not able to were, control yeah, him. Yeah, they were not. Which You're is right. why he's not with us. However, yeah. <laughs> he lives in the souls of some. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, Oak. She is like Oak. today's Tupac. Yeah. <laughs> so shout out to Oak. I yeah, tell her that Oak. is really, she got some Tupac soul in her. Oh, certainly. Absolutely. Certainly. But before we close it out, you want to let the people know where they can find you and follow you? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, my social media is Kismet Crystal. Uh, that's spelled K-I-S-M-E-T. And Crystal is spelled K-R-Y-S-T-L-E. Um, that's on all platforms, Twitter, um, 
Facebook, you can find me on that with that as far as uh, crystal, I mean, kismet.crystal at gmail.com. Okay. Um, and that's good. And then I'll have a website coming up soon. All right. And we will keep you posted on all of that. And you guys know, like Water for Chocolate, it hasn't changed. We're LWFC. You can find us, our LWFC podcast on Instagram as well as Snapchat. And then our Facebook page, Like Water for Chocolate with Lex Love and Truth. But again, appreciate you. Likewise, Absolutely. This was so a great show. I in. hope you all enjoyed it as much as I did. This I forgot I was recording for a while. This became <laughs> right. great conversation. But um, we look forward to everything that you have in the works. I already, and I wasn't going to share, but I am going to let you know, your farm that you have in your mind, it is going to come to pass. So I am a person who sees visions, and I normally right. don't do this oh, live, and I don't tell people this, but as you were speaking, it was shown to me, and it's going to be beautiful. It is going to be accessible, mm-hmm. and it is going to be a lot of white. And there's going to also Mm. be a lot of glass because right now that look is appealing and you are going to have rows of stuff that people can like how we walk through a grocery store. We're going to be able to walk through gardens and pick and choose what we need, go to the front and check out and go about our day just like we would a grocery store. Oh, yes. And I accept all of that. So, yes, that is going to happen for you. Thank you so much. But I appreciate you. Uh, hard to hold. You know, it's funny. <laughs> you, you're giving those descriptions, and those are the materials that I'm thinking. The sleek white and then a lot of glass. My God. Because the yes. plants are colorful enough. Yes. And that's tofu. what just, yes. The, yeah. There you go. And yeah. there it is, you guys. So be ready for that, that farm yeah, that's right that on. you will have access to. Great food. And you'll have a great owner who's going to be present in her Absolutely. store. Absolutely. So if you got Absolutely. questions, she'll have answers. Absolutely. But until next time, you guys, it's your girl, Truth. Thank you so much for hanging out with us, and I'll catch you guys next time.